a massive oil spill is polluting farmlands and waterways at a creek in Lasukukbene, community of Southern Nigeria local government area of Bayelsa State. The people claim to have noticed the oil spill on the 3rd of February from the Tebi Daba Brass Pipeline of OML 53, laid by the Nigerian Ajib Oil Company since 1974. Mm -hmm. The pollution has halted the agrarian lifestyle of the people who are now earnestly calling on the state government to compel the Nigerian Ajib Oil Company to come to their rescue. The oil company stopped their spill on the 18th of this month but is yet to issue a statement about what may have caused it. Ajib, Ajib has lived and uh, existed in this community for over 46 years and no tangible thing can be recorded. Our old ones are dying, our farmlands are gone, our fish on the river, in the river, no way, aquatic life is destroyed. The ecosystem, ecology, all is destroyed. The human beings are not safe. We are there for here calling on the world all over to come around and save us from this peril. We are in danger. We are on the verge of the extinction. Here in, here out, we witness different types of spills. But most of them, they say it's sabotage. And when it comes to sabotage, they don't have anything to do with us. They don't, we don't, they, in fact, we are not in their, in their pages at all. Lasukukmini is not part of Hajib Oil Company. But when it comes to impact, we are the people who are taking the whole brunt of impact of these oil spills in this community. And the spill this, uh, this time around cannot be equated to what happened in Santa Barbara. Moving towards this site now, having taken the speedboat for some kilometers, Inside this creek, we've seen that the whole creek is covered completely with crude oil, the black gold. And this is, I don't know what to compare whether this one with the Santa Barbara spill. This is not only environmental terrorism, it is criminal, it is double standard, it is environmental racism. And the environment here is telling me, looking at the trees, is telling me, because the environment speaks, is telling us that this environment is not healthy. It has suffered these similar things in the past. And to discuss the impact of this, we're now being joined from Bayelsa by Maurice Alagua. He's an environmentalist from the Friends of the Earth. Thank you so much, Maurice, for joining us tonight on the program. And of course, let's look at the fact that this oil spill, according to the community members, they're saying it's been raging since the 3rd of February, but it wasn't discovered until the 5th of this month, over a month period. But you are right there in Bayelsa State. Can you paint us a picture how bad is it there, even though Ajipa said that they have now capped it? Hello, Maurice. I'm not sure if you can hear me. All right, Maurice Alaga, there he is in Bialta State. He's an environmentalist. And, of course, he's part of the community where we've seen that oil spill being reported, even by Arise News. Of course, uh, from that report there by Ovietame George, it, we, we have discovered that the spill, according to the reports, have actually started since the 3rd of February and wasn't located until the 5th of uh, March. Christian, you are from the River Rhine part of Nigeria. Let's talk about the impact, really, and the implication of this over a month oil spill into a river that a lot of communities are dependent on not just for their you know their drinking water their so, but their sustenance their sustenance yes. really i mean it's obvious very very obvious uh the impact here fauna uh, and floral life our, our lives are dead completely in this uh, waterways and the adjoining creeks and the rest. But, and just like you said, mm. yeah, yes, it's environmental terrorism. Absolutely. And, well, okay. Morris Alagua, we've been mm. told, actually joins us now to really talk about this. Uh, Morris, thank you. I'm not sure if you can hear me now, but I was asking you, you are right there, you know, where the oil spill did, of course, since uh, the 3rd of February. Can you paint us a picture as to how bad the situation really is? Well, of course, uh, thank you very much. I'm seated here with mixed feelings. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, the fact that the media is still very enthusiastic about what happens to the environment, environmental safety, and all of that. But uh, I'm also sad that uh, the oil industry-induced pollutions have continued. They have continued. When you hear of blasts, when you hear of attacks on oil facilities, the authorities will, will come out shouting that they have lost so, so, so barrels, so, so, so 
billions of naira. But when you hear about equipment failures, just as it has just happened here in uh, Las Kukbini, uh, they will keep mute. They will pretend as if they don't know anything about it, even when the oil companies are playing double standards. The situation is really, really bad if you enter not only on the uh, River Non, where the community is you know, settled, but if you enter into the creeks where you have fishing camps, all the fishing camps have been deserted. You, you can't find anybody there anymore. And you won't blame them because the whole surface of the water, all from the entrance of the uh, uh, non-river to the spill point and beyond, the surface of the water is covered with the black gold, crude oil. And occasionally we see dead fishes floating by. Uh, so it's a very precarious situation. And the nonchalance uh, of Ajib, this is not new to me, because in about 2009 or thereabouts, in a community here in Yanagua local government called Calabar, this Calabar is not the type in Cross Rivers, it's spelled with K. Uh, Ajib personnel went to site where you have two spills, just about 10 meters apart. They clamped one, and rain came that day, they left, and left the other one that is unclamped, spewing crude oil for over three weeks without returning to site. And when we got wind of it in the environmental rights action, we had to go there. As a matter of fact, Ovietema George was also, uh, by the grace of God, he was on hand. When we went there and shot this out to the public, it took about two days before IGIP immediately swung into action and get, get back to site to clap it. So it is, it is not new, it is their trademark. And it uh, talks about, it speaks of volume, how irresponsible they act sometimes. Maybe because of the lacks in terms of the regulatory, regulatory uh, uh, processes. So I want to say uh, this is unbecoming and uh, we call for an environmental tribunal to be established in this country so that uh, these weak pet pole that they trampled uh, underfoot, these poor people that they feel are nothing, can uh, take their cases, their matters, to the environmental uh, tribunal to seek for environmental justice. The people of yes. Laksbini are actually uh, suffering from oil industry induced pollution. And don't forget, Article 24 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights uh, emphasized the need for every people, every people, to live in a satisfactory, an environment that is satisfactory for their development. Now, the people of Lasukubini have been denied uh, going about their means of livelihood, mm. how to get drinking water, how to bathe, because that is a fresh water area, it's not salt water area. Ah. Uh, so th 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 uh, this right, is uh, Maurice, very, very uh, pathetic, uh, especially, Maurice, especially said, when Sorry, Maurice, uh, to come in here. You've talked so much about the environmental terrorism, environmental racism, you know, being exhibited by uh, the company, Nigerian Ajib Oil Company. In over one month before yeah. this uh, well was capped, what uh, was the response or responses first of the Ministry of Environment and the Minister Sharon uh, uh, Ikeazu and of course the Director General of uh, the Nigerian Oil Spill Detective and Response Agency. If you call uh, uh, NAOC, you know, Irresponsible Environmental Act. What would you call those two government agencies? Who are supposed to, you know, uh, uh, immediately uh, repudiate, reprimand, and redress the situation? Have they responded to the oil spill in that community? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, the, the incident happened along the Tebidaba brass pipeline. It is not a wellhead. In fact, there are two spill points that occurred around the 3rd of uh, February. And it was just on the 5th of March, Ajib was able to go to the first spill point. And even when they got there, community people told them there is a second point. But they refused to go to the second point, which is spewing heavier volume of crude oil. 
They said they were directed to go to only to the first point, and they left. From that 5th of March till just yesterday, yesterday, 18th of uh, March, is when they return to do work on this, uh, uh, the second point. And so you can see the negligence. We're, we're, you're talking about the Ministry of Environment and uh, Nozra. Actually, when community people came to our office on the 7th or thereabout of March, we gave them opportunity to speak to the press. It was on radio, it was on air throughout uh, the 8th or 9th of uh, March. So they must have heard the, the information, even though the community also sent SOS to the Ministry of Environment by Elsa State. And uh, uh, Nozra was also aware. I talk about weak regulatory system. Weak in the sense that the federal government is having 60%, so they also arm these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, oil companies with the military. Not only that, even the regulatory agencies, you saw what happened during the ITO Santa Barbara oil spill. When Nozra was talking a different thing, the Baeza State Minister of Environment was also saying a different thing. Nozra was supporting that it's sabotage. The Minister of Environment, Baeza State, is saying, no, uh, it's not clear. We cannot call it sabotage. So even within the regulatory system, there is need for independence. There is need for them to sit up to ensure that we have confidence in the system so they, they become an un, uh, unbiased empire. But for now, we believe they are taking sides seriously with the polluters of our environment and uh, those who are uh, uh, selling on environmental terrorism. Quite unfortunate, really. Maurice Alagoa there. But it's a good thing that it's been kept now talking about uh, that facility, which, by the way, has been in existence in 1974. Mm. But of course, you know, we need to do better. Four oil spills we have seen in the last couple of months. Yes, it's Maurice not good, Alagoa, honestly. thanks so very much, a member of Friend of the Earth. Have not, they have not stopped it. They have not stopped it. It is still flowing. It is still flowing along the creek and the river. I asked an IGIP staff today, why is it that you have not boomed it? Why is it that you have not stopped it from spreading? Mm. And I don't understand what he, his response was. So we are calling on the authorities, the federal government, to prevail on the Nigerian Hajip oil company to ensure that they contain the spreading of the spill, go back to site for proper cleanup, remediation, and pay adequately for specific and yeah. general damages yeah. for the environment. The people of yes. Lasukuk Bene really deserve better, really. Thank you very much, uh, Maurice uh, Lagwa of uh, Friends of the Earth. This is really, really saddening, Absolutely. particularly when you have two big government institutions that are supposed to superintend over uh, things like this. It becomes so distorting, so, you know, um, disheveling and destroying the and lives, the livelihoods. Synergy, and the lack of, of concern, you know, for the people and their livelihoods. No, I, 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 uh, we need to do better. The Ministry of Environment should wake up. Absolutely. Nodra should wake up. Absolutely.